Adventures, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So as we continue on on our series of busting through all those scraps we've got, finding some really fun projects of what we can use all that scrap material for, I've got another great one for you today. So today I want to show you how to make these cute little zipper pouches that you can put with your journal. I volunteer for a couple nonprofits and I always like to have a pad and pen ready to go when I go to my next meeting. But I also like to do this, I love to draw and to sketch. And so whenever I travel, I also have a watercolor book that I put the same type of little pouch on. So I wanna show you how easy these are to make. And once again, we are using scraps. So go out and get your, or pick up your scrap pile or your basket of scraps, dig through some, find some really pretty fabrics, and let's get making on this week's Scrap Buster Project. But hey, before we get there, I just gotta tell you, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, thanks so much for stopping by. Click on that subscribe button and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. I try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. So give me a second. I'm going to get my camera angle changed and we are going to get making these zipper journal pouches. Okay, so let's get going on this project. This is a really fun project and I just love how it turned out. And so what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be using my um, cutting mat in just a second. But I'm going to put that off to the side for a minute. I want to show you everything we're going to need. I am going to use my clover point turner at the very end. I'm going to be using my ruler and my rotary um, to cut this fabric. And I like to grab an extra large zipper. Now this is a probably a 14 inch zipper more than what I need, but um, what I have found is when I do an eight or a nine inch zipper, it gets a little tricky. So I wanna show you when we get into the project why I like to use an extra large zipper. Also, I went and grabbed some scraps um, from my um, scrap um, pile. And I will tell you that you just need scraps that are gonna be big enough to measure about nine and a half by six inches. So we'll cut both of these out and they're, they're gonna work perfect. Gonna need some thread and bobbin um, for the, and then you're also gonna need some elastic. Now I have tried this with the thicker elastic and I have found that I like using this elastic. I picked this up from Amazon and it's stretchy. You will see it used a lot with um, headbands, um, but this just works really nice. And I'll make sure I put the link down below. So we're gonna need that. Already went over the zipper. I am gonna use some interfacing. So this is, you can do a light to a medium. I just grabbed what I had on hand in my stash. And so I'm gonna need that. Um, let's see, I'm gonna definitely use some clips at time during this project. And then of course my sewing machine. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. The very first thing I like to do, I don't know about you guys, but my stash um, of fabric is never quite um, pressed nice, right? So before we cut it out, I just want to give it a quick little iron. So I always have my iron um, off camera just a little bit, all set, ready to go. I've got lots of comments about my iron before. This is the Panasonic um, NIWL607. I'll make sure that I give you a, um, a link to that also. Um, it's a cordless one and I just really like it for my sewing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take both of these and I'm going to cut them at the exact same time. That way I know that I have got the exact same size. Um, just trying to adjust this so you guys can see everything on this. And so what we're going to do is we are going to cut this to be nine and a half inches by six. So let's go ahead and cut that six inch mark first. So I'm just making sure my fabric 
is right there all together. And of course, my ruler was right underneath my camera. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a six inch mark. I happen to have a six inch ruler that works out really nice. And then what I'm going to do is I got to count this backwards, Lisa, because I've got my um, thing upside down. But we're going to go ahead and do this right. Let's see, what do we have? How long do we have? This is going to be, look at that. My green piece is exactly nine and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Okay, so we have got both of our pieces of fabric all cut ready to go. Now let's get our cutting mat out of the way and let's bring in those pieces of interfacing. Now the interfacing I had already pre-cut and I cut that to be um, five and a half inches by nine inches. So I just gave myself about a quarter inch all the way around and it's kind of hard for you guys to see but it's just not just, just a little bit smaller. You probably can see it on this one much, much better. Let's just take a peek. Yeah, you guys can see that difference there. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take my iron and I'm going to adhere that. Now, follow the directions on the interfacing that you have, um, definitely. But just go ahead and make sure it's adhered. Um, interfacing, um, the fusible type has kind of a um, rough or a bubbly edge and that is the edge that you want to make sure that you've got face down to the wrong side of your fabric. Now I like to always turn mine over and then give it another good press on the right side of the fabric just making sure that it's all um, adhered and then let's do that other one. So as I said this is the rough side this is the wrong side of my fabric, and I am just putting that right in there. So we're just going to go ahead and make sure that's all on. And then we will move on to our next step. And our next step is going to be adding that zipper in. So we're going to move right into putting the zipper in. Now, I'll show you again why I like the larger zipper. So I am going to start with my, this is what I'm going to put on the outside of my pouch. So I'm going to start with this piece first. What I'm going to do is I've got my zipper here, and this is zipper right side up. I am going to flip it, and I am going to put the wrong side of the zipper to the right side of my fabric. Okay, so I've got right side of fabric, wrong side of zipper. Now I'm going to take my lining and I'm going to measure it up and I am going to put wrong side down. So I've got both my good sides of my fabric facing each other, sandwiched in between my zipper. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip. And I like using clips. A lot of people like to use pins and some people even like to use um, tape on theirs. But the key here is that you... Okay, so let's um, put our zipper in. So I'm over here at the sewing machine. Now I could definitely use my zipper foot, but I'm going to opt not to use my zipper foot today. And I am going to start right on that zipper tape. So as you can see, I've got my zipper, I mean my foot here. I'm going to bring, put my needle to the left hand setting and I'm just going to rest up my um, foot right against that zipper. So I'm going to come on here and I'm going to um, sew away and then just as I get to the end there, I'm going to do a back stitch and then I'm just going to go really slow. The key here is that you go slow and that you feel that zipper right here. Now, the reason why I like the larger zipper is I do not have to worry about opening my zipper pull at all because it is off to the side. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish sewing all the way along here. And just using this side 
this side of my foot to guide me. I'm going to do a back stitch. And then while we're still here at the machine, I'm going to cut my threads. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a finger press here. So what I'm going to do is just pull and finger press. Okay. And then I'm going to flip this and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. And I can see that I don't like how far away that is right now. I think that that's too far away. So I'm going to go ahead and do another line along this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do right on top of my zipper. I just feel like I didn't quite get that where I wanted it. So I'm just going to, and it just really is going to reinforce my zipper. This is going to be much closer. back up and that's a much better much better distance and then I'm just going to finger press it I want to make sure my edges are even on this side so I'm going to finger press it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I've still got my needle on the left hand side this side of my foot is resting on my zipper I'm going to increase my stitch um, length to three and a half and I'm just going to top stitch. Now, the reason why we do this step is that we do not want that zipper um, to get caught in the lining of our fabric. So this just really gives it a nice finish on the inside. So this is going to give us one side of our zipper totally done. So we'll go ahead and cut our threads. And then we have got a very nice finish right there. Now what we're gonna do while we're still at the machine, no reason for us to pop over, we are going to take this side of the zip, of the um, front panel. And I like to at this point in time, clip one at a time. So I'm just taking my time, making sure that I am measuring up and lining that up just even. I'm going to get that one too. And then what we're going to do, whoops, then what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the exact same thing to this side. So we're sandwiching it in. We're lining up our sides and most importantly, we're lining it up right along that top part. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a stitch. Now, one thing Lisa forgets every once in a while is my stitch length right now is on three and a half. I want to make sure that when I start sewing this, that I'm at my standard two and a half um, stitch width. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust that. I am going to put my foot down and we are going to give it a stitch, just like we did on the last side. And the next step is really where I want to show you why I like to use this bigger zip, zipper, longer zipper. We're going to cut it off um, so there is some waste, um, but it makes the top stitch of this next piece so easy. So I'm going to finish this all the way along. Do a little back stitch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in and I'm going to unzip this. And reach to the other side with my fingers and get my zipper unzipped and then turn this guy Right side out. I just want to get that zipper all the way open. And once we get it opened, we're able to get to the other side and do that top stitch so much easier. So now I've got it all laid out and I've already got the top stitch on this side. Now what I'm going to do 
is I'm able to do the top stitch on this side. Now, if I would have had a shorter zipper, this would have been really hard to get to. I mean, it's definitely doable. Don't get me wrong there, but this is just my easy way that I think to do this. I'm going to increase my stitch to three and a half again. We're going to put a top stitch going all the way down. And we've got that part done. Let's hop back over to the sewing table and I'll show you the next steps. Okay, so we're back over here at the sewing table and I am gonna grab, I thought I had my little clippers handy, but I don't see them. So I am gonna take a second just to clip my little um, threads here. I always like to get those out of the way um, so they don't get caught up when you're sewing. Um, sometimes people call that a nest. It makes a nest of the threads and your bobbin gets all messed up. So just take a minute to get these all nice. Now, this is the outside, right? But what I want to do is, and this kind of sounds funny, I'm going to zip this up so it's inside out right now. And I want to lay it so that I'm nice and even. And you can eyeball it. This looks like it's really close and even there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some clips and just clip that so I know right where I'm going to want to sew. Okay, and same with this. Now, one trick here, this is when you want to leave your zipper open. So once we sew that shut, <laughs> you will not be able to get to that. Before I can sew this, there's two things I need to do. One, we want to insert our elastic, and two, we want to cut these. But let's do our elastic first. What I have found, and this is going to vary on the size of journal that you want to be making. But what I have found that works for me on the college rule um, journals that I use is nine inches. Okay, so I'm going to cut this right at nine inches. But I would definitely, depending on the size of journal you're going to be putting your pouch on, you might want to do a little bit of um, checking that, that measurement. So now what I want to do is I want to insert my elastic. Now my elastic has got a pretty side and a dull side. So a shiny side and a dull side. And so I want to make sure that my pretty side, let me think about this for a second. When I turn this inside out, I want my pretty side to be showing out. So for my pretty side to be showing out, I want right sides together with my fabric. Okay, so I know that that is the center because that's where my zipper is coming to. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab some non sewing zippers. I know Lisa's got a pair here. Actually, I think, yep, these are my non sewing zippers. Let's go ahead and get that zipper clipped. Okay, so then I've got my zipper right in there. And I'm going to take another clip and I'm going to clip that guy. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak this guy. Down. So what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to sneak down this end of my elastic. Now I do realize that I did clip this zipper already and I did that off camera. So I apologize for that. But I did clip that with my scissors. I also noticed I've been calling these as my sewing zippers and these are my um, non sewing scissors. I don't know what's going on with me today, but I'm going to go ahead and clip that right there in place. One thing I want to make sure you guys pay close attention on is your zipper pull has got to be between the top and the bottom. Do not let it be outside here where we cut that zipper off. Otherwise, you'll have a little bit of an issue. So we have got our elastic clipped in place. Now, one thing I didn't show you at the very beginning, one other little scrap piece of material you're going to want is two pieces of your scraps. And I cut these 
two inches by four inches. And you can do your inside fabric or your outside fabric, whichever you have. So what I like to do at this point in time is I am going to go ahead and you could definitely go over to the sewing machine and sew this right now if you want to be safe. But I like to save steps. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm putting right sides of material together. And this is just going to clean up our edge. I'm going to make sure that I've got everything still clipped. Now the trick here is this is a little bit wider and I'm going to wrap that edge around. And I'll show you why I do that in the next step. And it works out really nice, makes this look nice and clean. And it's much easier to fold over. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to just measure it up and see how I'm making sure that I've got an edge over on each side. Being, making sure I still got my elastic, still got my zipper, still have everything put together. And then what we're going to do, whoops, what I forgot that one step, didn't I? I want to make sure I wrap that around. So I've got that all nice and wrapped up. We're going to take that over to the sewing machine and we are going to sew right across. So let's hop over there. We're back at the sewing machine. I want to make sure I'm at that two and a half um, inch stitch length. I'm going to put my needle in the middle position now, and I'm using my presser foot as my guideline on the outside. And I'm going to stitch, and then I'm going to do a back stitch, and then I'm going to stitch away. Now be very careful when you're going across the zipper part here, and this is also where your elastic is. I like to do a back stitch here just to reinforce it. One, the zipper is there, and then two, that elastic is going to get a lot of pull. Okay, so you want to make sure that you um, give that a nice, nice um, tight stitch. So then I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to cut my threads. And I'm going to come to the other side and do the exact same thing. right here at the sewing machine and what I'm going to do is I am going to pull this side up and see how nice that looks that gives it a nice nice finish I'm going to come to this side and I am going to fold this over and it gets a little tricky here but I'm going to fold this over and then I'm going to fold it again and I'm going to clip it in place and this is going to give our inside just a really nice look. Now, not that anybody's going to see the inside, but if you decide you want to sell these, you want to give a very professional look to it. So let's go ahead and fold this one too, and that way we can sew both of them at the exact same time. Okay, so I've got it up. I'm going to fold it down. I'm trying to do this up in the air so you guys can see it better. I'm going to fold it down, and then I'm going to fold it again. And then I'm going to clip it in place. And then we're going to take the sewing machine and we are going to do a stitch across there. So now I want to go really close to this edge. And remember again that your zipper is underneath of there and so is your elastic. Okay, so you just want to go really slow. Take your time. I leave this at a two and a half, even though this is what you would call a, um, a top stitch. I leave this at a two and a half because I just feel that I want to make sure I get a good stitch. It's just reinforcing everything for us again. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a back stitch there. And I'll give you a close up look at that one just so you can see. See how nice and close that I have that. Sorry, I'm trying to get that in camera angle for you. Um, so let's go ahead and do this one too. Okay, 
Okay, let's hop back over, turn this inside out or right side out, and we have got a project. Okay, so we're going to clip. Clip, clip, clip. We always like to clip. Makes it look clean, makes it look professional all the way around. And my little trick, I'm going to clean up my area. Okay, let's see what we look like. Let's grab that clover point turner. I told you I'd use that at the end. And I just like to use it to push out those corners. Turn out my other corner. Unzip that baby all the way. Oh my gosh, I love how this one turned out. Love my blues. You can really push that out with your fingers, but you can use your clover point turner just to give a good point there. Zip up our little pouch. I'm going to give it a quick, quick press. Now, I don't want to press on the zipper. Okay, so be careful of that. And I went and grabbed. These are the composition notebooks that I pick up um, all the time, and I just love them. I like to have my zipper at the top. And then look at this. I'm just going to slide this right on here. And how perfect is that? Open that up. Put your pencils in there. Close it up. I am going to make one for each one of my little pads that I have. I love doing this um, for when I travel. I love to draw when I'm like on a plane or if we're just stopped someplace. Um, and so I'll have my pencils. I'll, I won't use a college rule there. I'll use my like my watercolor paper or my regular paper. But this I can just fill up with all kinds of pencils and we're ready to go. So if you like this Scrap Buster project, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you share it with your friends and please share any other ideas for any other Scrap Buster projects. I have a couple more for you. So stay tuned next week for our next one. Thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday.